other side of the camera, those at all of our campuses online. Can we do that with applause right now? We're so glad you're here. If you're with us, Facebook Live or YouTube, Spotify, Apple, wherever, we're so honored that you're here. We're in week number four of the series, the concluding message of the series that I've entitled Circles. And I love what Lisa Methvin told me yesterday or this, uh, past, a couple of days ago. She said, Shannon, you know what? People and the gospel shared is found in salvation in rows, but discipleship is found in circles. We're saved in rows and we grow in circles. And I want to talk a little bit about your circle. And not only that, I want to talk real specifically about your inner circle. I say this all the time. I'm honored and, and, and I'm humbled, actually, that at 50 g paw age, that every once in a while I still have the opportunity to share at summer camps and weekend retreats for students. For, for, and I will just say this, regardless of your age, but especially students, you show me the five people you text the most and I'll show you your future. And I, I would say that's true for us as adults as well. You need, I need to make sure in every relationship, but especially in the relationship that I want to talk about today, which is our inner circle, that we make wise decisions determining who gets in this space. Here's the fact about your inner circle. It's yours. And who's in it? You made the decision. Now, there may be some that you're like, man, I got to make some changes in this. And they're, especially after we talk for the next few minutes together, there's a great chance that is the case. And then there's some, in some situations, that you can't change the inner circle of, of your life when it comes to proximity relationships, such as mom, dad, marriage, so forth and so on. But we can make those better. But I'm really talking mostly concerning the relationships that you are allowing in your life to become the inner circle of your life. I believe with all of my heart that power is released in relationship. I believe that Jesus demonstrates this. God demonstrated it when he simply said this, it's not good for man to be alone. There is power released in relationship. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, in verse number 9, also in verse number 10, you see the beauty of of relationship. Matter of fact, look at it with me. It says two are better than one. And you need to make sure in the two, in the pairing, in the relationship that you take heed of who you are allowing inside your circle because your loudest voice needs to be the best voice. If you agree with that, say yeah. yeah. So we need to make sure our inner circle's right. We need to make sure that we're taking this space and choosing right people. Ryan, come on up here. Matter of fact, I get to choose who I want in my circle. I know you haven't been in the gym in a while, but if you could hurry, you're hurting my message time here. All I know is here's the thing. I can, I can make assessment of who I want in my circle. And if they're going to make the best and the most out of my inner circle, if y'all are still with me, say yeah. yeah. So I can choose if I want. It ain't happening. It ain't, it ain't happening. <laughs> Thank you for the illustration, Ryan. And I know, and it may not be based on size, it may be based on, I'm going to give you some tools that are going to help you, but most of us here, most of us here have made the decision of our inner circle, do you need to make some changes? Do you need to make some changes? Power is released when you make relationship. I believe this with all my heart. I want to just give you some preface thoughts to the message today. And the first thing is this. All good things flow through relationship. Period. I mean, start at the beginning of time. Look at what Jesus did on the cross. Talk about it in, how, whatever you want to say. Relationship, all good things flow through relationship. I, I could also say a lot of bad can flow through it if you have the wrong people in your inner circle. You have to make the decision. I have to make the decision. Not only that, watch this. You get to choose. You don't have to let so-and-so in. You, you, and, and for many of us, you've already chosen. Some of us have to make new choices. Some of us have to ask some people to leave. I'm going to talk how to do that biblically. But for us, and, and for, for the Word of God teaching us, 
All good things flow through relationship. Number two is this, and again, this is just some observation I think will help you. A power connection to God and God's blessing for any transition in life happens through great relationship. If it's, if it's understanding who Jesus is, many of you, because of relationship, found Christ. Someone invited you to church or shared the gospel with you. You had an opportunity to find transition. Maybe it's vocationally. Maybe it's marriage. But I know this. Power connection to who God is happens and should happen and should be a transition moment in your life to the better things that God has for you. In other words, anyone you're about to go to a new level with or enter into a new season with, is a moment of transition, is it for the best or for the worst? You get to ask, and you get to answer. That moment of transition, that's why especially I say to everyone single here, make a list, check it twice, find out if he's naughty or naughty, because it's probably both. I'm just saying you need to make sure it's the right person in your circle. You and I get to choose. When I made assessment, when Ryan came up here, I made an assessment very quickly that he and I would not work well together in the circle. You need to make the same encouraged decision. Matter of fact, the scripture says this, and I ask you to pray this over your life in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 10. Matter of fact, you can read in Romans 12 and in 1 Corinthians 12 that we're supposed to desire all gifts. Well, there's one gift given that I think will help you in determining who should be in your circle, and it says this, to pray and ask God to give you the gift of distinguishing between the spirits. You need to ask God, say, God, give me the discernment to know whether or not these people, this person should be inside this inner circle. I had the opportunity to meet with an individual yesterday, and every bit of counsel that this individual received, in my opinion, was unbiblical. Why? Because the person speaking was someone who was from a worldview that is not a biblical worldview. You need to make sure, what am I going to choose to allow in this inner circle and what voices and what truth so that I can succeed in life? You have to distinguish. And not only that, the power is this. God gives you the ability through the power of the Holy Spirit to distinguish between those spirits. And then you know, Ruth says, okay, Naomi is somebody I want. David says, Jonathan is someone, yeah, I need in my life. Paul says, this is someone I can mentor, disciple, inspire, take to the next level. And not only that, he not only discipled, he became a brother. He, he, Timothy helped carry him. We can give story after story in the scripture. Do you have someone in your circle with a biblical worldview that is helping you succeed in every area of your life? Now, it may not be the same person for every area, but it may be one person's carrying a third of it, another person's carrying a third, another person, but they are motivating you this inner circle, and it will be small. It will be small. They will be motivating you and I to success, especially spiritual success. Because when it comes to bringing people into your life, you need to distinguish between the spirits so that you know that it's not just financial assets or looks or somebody that knows the game about this, that, or the other, but you can determine whether or not this person is bringing a narrative into my life that is negative. Is this person resentful? Are they somebody that's always talking about somebody else and always bashing somebody else? You get to choose what type of person you're going to allow in your life. And then you need to make the decision, should this person be in the inner circle of my life? Are they pushing me towards spiritual, relational success with Jesus ultimately? And then in whatever area of my life, are they pushing me in it so I can experience greatness or do they have a controlling spirit now i want to back up for all of us that have been married for almost 30 years like cindy and i or you have kids these inner relationships are proximity relationships they're not necessarily just inner circle you got to work on those too and some of you have uh, relationships at work and so forth i'm talking about the people that are motivating moving you getting you in motion in the areas of your life that make a difference You show me your friends, I'll show you your future. 
You show me your inner circle, and I'll show you your significance. You need people in your life that move you, and you need God to give you the tools to recognize the wrong people. I mean, it's easy if they're encouraging you to sin, they're not the right people. I mean, that's pretty simple, isn't it? I mean, like if they're encouraging you to do things that are wrong, you're like, man, that doesn't need, it doesn't mean that, I'll tell you how to separate from those people. No, I'm going to tell you right now. Can I tell you how to separate from the wrong people? This is at the end of my message. I'm just going to say it now because I think it's important. Plus, it's my message. I can put it wherever I want. And plus, I'm listening to my inner circle and the Holy Spirit says somebody needs this right now because they might get up and leave. So I'm just going to tell you right now. Can I, can I tell you? A gradual separation is how you separate. You may need the cord ripped out, but that isn't how you need to do it. You just might have to do a gradual cut, gradual separation. And there are people, the Spirit of God, if you're walking with God, is already telling you, man, I do not need this person in my life. Here's how I determine it for people just on the outset. Are your Saturday night friends motivating you to Sunday morning? I hope that helps somebody. Matter of fact, your Saturday night friends ought to be beside you right now jacked up and ready to roll or are your saturday night friends the ones that encourage you to make wrong decision god is encouraging us to make right relationship and sometimes a gradual separation is the best thing number two if you want to make a decision outside of wrong relationship and inner circle number two is this don't keep going back don't keep going back if you know he or she's bad for you quit going back just, just say no. Matter of fact, the scripture says it this way. Don't participate in the things these people do. Who are these people? These people are the wrong people. And that's Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 7. Matter of fact, if you read verse 6 at the beginning of this, it says, don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins. And there are always those people. It's like, man, did God really say? Did God really say? Did God really say? Did, do you know that's exactly what Satan said for the first sin that was ever committed thousands of years ago? He said this, did God really say? And it's the same thing. Did God really say, it, it, I can't drink, I don't have to go to church. I, did God really say divorce is a sin? Did God really say I can, don't have to have sex for marriage? Did God really, you see what I'm saying? We're still in the same situation. Get the right people in your circle. If you want to be Mrs. Billy Jackwagon, get Billy Jackwagon in your circle. That's how that happens. Get the right people in. By the way, right people are not someone that casually happen. Right people are concentrated. You have to give focus. You got to be able to know and you got to take time to build relationship with them so you can get the right people in your circle. And if you'll be the right person, I can promise you this. If you stay focused on God's purpose, you'll always find God's person. And I'm talking about that categorically. Every category. Stay focused on God's best. There's an individual in Scripture, and now I'm going to get to my message, and it's the person named Samson. A matter of fact, in the Brand New Church app, you can follow along with me because these notes are not like, they're, they're actually homiletically, they're terrible. I would have, I'd make an F on my homiletics paper on this in seminary, but I'm going to give them to you like I feel it, all right? I'm just going to throw them out there. They're not pretty. They don't start with P, and there's no poem. But I want to help you because this is how God helped me. This is where I, this was about year number four as a senior pastor where God brought me to the story of a guy named Samson. Raise your hand, all campuses, maybe even if you're on Facebook Live, you ever heard of the story or some portion of the story of Samson, Ra raise your hand. Can I just throw out my theory for those of you that haven't heard my theory of Samson? You know, remember Delilah? Remember the crazy lady named Delilah? Yeah, okay, yeah, we all do. She's crazy. And Delilah being crazy was off her meds for a, a couple of nights, and when she was, she starts luring Samson. Samson needed meds, and that was his problem. No, he didn't. I, I'm just saying they're sitting there, and what, what did she constantly ask him? Does anybody remember the story well enough to know? What is the source of your... Come on, say it with me like you know it. If there's six or seven even, just say it loud. What is the source of your, of your strength or your power? I don't believe Samson was jacked. I don't believe he was the cover of Muscle and Fitness magazine. 
Y'all are too young to know what a magazine is. I don't think he was the cover of Instagram's Muscle and Fitness. I don't think he was ripped like a tater chip. I don't think he had a six-pack. I don't think he had, you know, the pec deck and the abs and the gun show. Why? Because I think they would automatically think it was that. I think he was very average, a lot like Ryan. I think that's what he looked like. (laughs) I'm just saying, No one's asking Ryan what the source of his strength is. We all know it's Kalen. And uh, I just know, as you walk through the story of Samson, this is what blows me away. He was given the anointing of the judge. He was given the anointing of supernatural strength. And here's the crazy part. He was all by himself. The reason Samson failed, since I'm at the end of my message, but I'm not done, The reason Samson failed, he had nobody in here. Listen, even the lone ranger had Tonto. The lone ranger had Tonto. And and what's crazy is that there are people that I know that love God. They have all types of circles in their life. They have business circle. They have relationship circle. They have investment circle. They have whatever it is. And they have no one who loves Jesus in the circle. Some doing those areas, marriage, so forth and so on, by themselves. This is why Samson failed. He was all alone. I I believe that categorically there's several, but Samson was all alone. If you're a note taker, you can write that one down. It's not point number one, but I'm pretty much just randomly throwing points out. You and I cannot operate alone. God never created you to be by yourself. Now, there are times we need alone time. Don't misunderstand me. Jesus went alone to pray, so forth and so on. I get that part. But God, you need people in your life that will challenge you and charge you and convict you. (laughs) Who are those people? Listen, if all you do is call your mom, she's only going to be on your side. That is not an inner circle person. Somebody needs to write that down. Some husband just said amen right now. It's like, I'm going to call my mom. Mom is not a fair person to ask. Mom is always for you. Mom, I just shot somebody. I love you, babe. I know they deserved it. You need the right inner circle. And you need it in every category of your life. Don't do life alone. The best wisdom I ever got from one of my mentors is this, is you and Cindy need marriage counseling. I was like, I'm a pastor. I mean, we know the word of God. And then they were like, you need to go. And I was like, I'll go. I mean, I got it all together. We showed up at Dr. Jonathan Kood's office, one of our marriage mentors. And next thing you know, my wife's crying on the couch. We're only five minutes in. I was like, what did I do? And then I realized I sucked as a husband. That's a bottom line. And it was, it was such a great thing. I needed someone else's voice in my life that could make me better. And the right people in your circle are not patty caking you and good gaming you all the time. There are people that say, no, don't. You can do better. We've got this. Quit doing that. You got pepper in your teeth. Who knows what I'm talking about here? You know that kind of person? Get that kind of inner circle in your life. Sometimes you need a therapist to say, you suck as a husband. And if you're offended by that, get someone that says sucketh, because that's King James. <laughs> I have points in this message. I have no idea where they're at, but I'm going to throw another one out here. Here's why Samson failed, because he didn't do the first things first. He didn't do the first relationship right, which is what? The Heavenly Father. Why do we know that? Because it spilled over into his parents' relationship and then spilled over into his dating relationship. If you want to know your walk with your groom, Jesus, look at your relationship in your marriage. You'll, you can, it's a mirror. If you're single, the pursuit of your marriage. If you're under the roof of your home, the way you pursue and, and operate in obedience to your mom and dad. If you get the first relationship right, Jesus, all those other ones fall in place. Samson, I mean, out of the gate, just bombed. Look at at Judges chapter 14 and verse number 2. He knew that he was, according to God's word, supposed to be operating and dating within his religious understanding. Not only that, the Philistines were the major enemy. 
And he says this to his parents, a young Philistine woman, woman in Timnah caught my eye. And then he says this to his parents, I want to marry her. Does anybody have a child like this? I had one. I, I mean, I still have that person, but I mean, does anybody got a child? Raise your hand and just help a man out here. You got a kid, I want to marry her. Yes, you do. And they tell you, I want that. And if they don't get it, what's their response? It starts with peeing out, pouting. And that's exactly, he says, go get her for me. And then they say what every parent says. Is there a girl in our youth group, you know, maybe you're kind of interested in? Can we stick in the YMB kids? Um, I mean, we don't need to be going down to the Satan.com church to find your, your girlfriend. I don't know if that's a real church, but I am saying don't go there to meet someone. Samson did every relationship wrong. And the crazy part is this. He had no relationship. He had no one. He was alone. He's all by himself. Can I give a word of wisdom that I know will benefit and bless you? What you don't conquer in your life when you're young will conquer you when you're old. The beauty is, put the young at whatever age you want. <laughs> it may be 50. But we know there are areas in your life and your youth, and you're still allowing, because you don't have the right person in your life that is continuing to allow you to fail in that area. What, what conquers you at when you're old is what you didn't conquer when you were young. And here's the thing, you have all of God's power within you to conquer it in Jesus' name. You have the victory over it. I had a person just the other day, he's like, man, why do you think I'm just continuing to, to fail in this area, in this area, in this area? And we trailed it all the way back, and it was so obvious. I was like, you, gotta say, you, you didn't say no here. You got to say no so that you can win here. He didn't have the first relationship right. Here, here's another reason Samson failed, and many people fail with the inner circle choices of their life. It's because Sa Samson was always in, living in history. He was always going back. He always went back. He always went back. He, he, even when the whole deal with the wedding went bad, he went back. And when, whenever he uh, took and a couple thousand people and whipped them with a donkey's jawbone, you remember that? And then he, he killed a lion, you remember that? And he ends up doing what... You're not supposed to do. There were three covenants, a Nazarite vow, if you will, that he, he made to God and God asked him to make. You remember the, it wasn't the first one, but you remember the, the most important one was, or the most obvious, don't cut your hair, which is a picture of what? It's a picture of this. Don't get rid of some part of the story of your life. All parts, all things work together for good to them who love God and are called according to his purpose. Let the story flow. That's a picture of, of, of letting your life be a sum total of God's glory, good, bad, and ugly. Number two, he said this, don't drink alcohol. And the reason he said that is, is, is the same reason I believe John the Baptist made the same vow where he said, I'm not going to put alcohol to my lips. And the reason is, is he wanted a sober mind. He wanted to be ready. He wanted Samson ready and vigilant. Now, we know in the situation with Delilah that he passed out a multitude of times. And I can promise you, he did not keep that vow. We also know at the first one that he eventually finally told her, isn't it funny that he said, if you braid my hair in seven looms, which is seven man buns which would be amazing, but uh, he did seven man buns. Uh, if you got one man bun, you ain't a man. You got to have seven man buns to really be the man. And he got so close, and then he did tell her, and we know what took place. The last vow was this, don't touch anything dead. What happens to so many of us, the reason we can't get the right people in our circle is because we're constantly going back, touching the old dead stuff of old relationships in our life, and it's causing mistrust and doubt and relationship hurdle and relationship error, and as long as you continue to touch dead stuff, you'll continue to fail. Quit touching dead stuff. Quit going back. Some of you are still telling the same old story. Some of you still living with bitterness and frustration and anger and constant. Listen, quit touching the dead stuff. 
And if those situations happen and they have wrecked you, ask God to forgive you, move on, and let God heal you and live in the victory that's already yours in Jesus. Yesterday, I had... I love celebrating God's truth. I love it. Yesterday, I had the opportunity to go and eat an organic meal with my wife because we, we prefer delicious organic food. And so at Raising Cane's, I ordered the... Uh, I thought that was all natural chicken. What are you all laughing at? And uh, I, uh, I thought about getting the four, but thought I was like, you know what? God created the world in six days. I'm going to get six pieces of chicken, and then I'm going to rest. And, uh, and my wife's coming out of Raising Cane's with, I mean, it, was a lot. it looked like a lot. And, of course, she's a little lady, and she had big old lemonade and all this. She's carrying it out. So I just pulled out of the parking lot and went backwards into the drive through and helped her get everything in the car because this is treasure. We, we don't want to spill this stuff. Those fries were hot and delicious, and I didn't get no slaw. I got extra toast. Who's with me in Jesus' name, the bread of life? You keep that slaw. That is disgusting. I say, Tana, get behind me, Satan, and get me some white bread. Hallelujah. And extra butter on it. I'm sitting there and I'm protecting it, putting it in the car. As I'm doing it, I have to get out of the drive-through the wrong direction. And a lady's coming, pretty, pretty uh, excited about her canes as well. And uh, she comes in and then I try to get her, but she goes around me. And for some reason, I don't know why, I could tell she had, she had a great manicure because her middle finger was so <laughs> extended. <laughs> that I could see her manicure. I was like, that is a good manicure. So I decided as she gassed past me to put my car in reverse. And so I did to block her from getting into the drive through right? Because that's what a pastor of a church would do. And I gas on it and block her from getting in the drive through and get out of my Jeep. And everyone in the parking lot is like, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> This is an amazing thing. This is a true story. And uh, I get out of the Jeep. Well, she start. I don't know if she was crying, but almost crying. There was three other girls in the car. They start screaming. And I come around to the window, and I just said, roll your window down. And she didn't want to, and she finally did. She put her middle finger down, rolled her window down. And I said, would you please forgive me for being selfish and blocking the drive through? I said, my wife just had this big old bag, and I ordered extra toast, and and I just wanted to make sure it was all in the car, but I, I, I know it causes irritation to you and it's super crowded. I said, would you please forgive me? It, it's okay. <laughs> Roll the window up, let her out as fast as she could. My wife is like, why did you do that? I said, I didn't want whatever pain was in her to think that the natural response of everyone is more pain. The Spirit of God told me, he said, go love her. And I'm sure blocking her a little bit more to the drive-thru didn't, wasn't complete love. But I just wanted her to know that men don't respond, men don't respond wrong. They respond in the spirit. And she was so, I mean, she had tears in her eyes. She was like, and I was like, I'm so sorry, would you please forgive? She didn't even know what to do. Here's the thing. You get to choose. And you get to choose to have the right people in your inner circle that will tell you the right way to respond in a wrong situation. Samson needed that person. And I wanted that young lady. She, I, I know she'll never forget it as long as she lives. I mean, I could have jumped out and been reactionary and triggered and this out of the other, which I just wanted her to see the love of Jesus. And I was going the wrong way. You get the opportunity. Samson had the opportunity. But Samson didn't do a very good job at it. Matter of fact, he couldn't communicate well at all. We, we see that all through here. He's like, I want to marry her. I mean, who talks to your parents like that? Go get her for me. And, and then he gets mad at his almost wife at, at the wedding. And look what he says to her in verse number 18. She ends up evidently telling this riddle. And he says this, if you wouldn't have plowed with my heifer. Can I just give you some marriage counseling right here, man? I'm not getting, don't miss this. Listen to me. Do not call your future wife a heifer. Write that down. I just saved a marriage. If you had to plow with my heifer, this is terrible. And some of you are mad at me. I didn't write the Bible. I have a book coming out you can buy next week. But I did not write this. If you'd not plowed with my heifer, this guy's got some relate. When you say things like that or you're in relate, you need somebody in your life that can and will 
Not necessarily literally. If you're a man, you should have guys that can literally slap you in the face and just say, you're an idiot. That's the kind of friend you need. That's the kind of friend I need. Why? Because we need the right people in our inner circle so that we have the right worldview to unbelievable success for God's glory. Can I give you two more in closing? Let me give you two more, and that is this. Samson's sin affected everyone around him, not just, which he had no one in his inner circle, but it affected everyone around him. He was called to judge. He was in a leadership position. And in that leadership position, he let down everyone around him. Matter of fact, there's a point where he gets so irritated, so frustrated in Judges chapter 16. In verse number three, it says this. It says, Samson got up. He took hold of the doors of the town gate, including the two posts. It says he lifted them up, bar and all. Now, I know for many of you, you're like, oh, what does that really mean? Well, here's what it means. It means this. He's carrying two semi-trucks, the cabs, the, the engine and the cabs. That's how heavy this is. And he picks it up, he takes the gate of the city, and he throws it out to the end of the city. What's this a picture of? Here's what the picture is. He doesn't have anybody that loves him enough to say no, and he opened the gate for his entire family, his entire nation to be destroyed. And when you don't have the right people in your circle and you are full of anger or full of wrong decision, or you just up and make some stupid, quick decision, you wreck everyone around you. I want to speak specifically to the men in the room. Men, you're the gatekeeper. Be a man. And get men in your life that tell you what it looks like to be a man. And you're like, oh, that's chauvinistic. I'm not talking about chauvinism. I'm talking about spiritual leadership. Spiritual leadership. Be that person. And don't just say, oh, I'm just going to be mad at my wife and I'm just going to open the door. The scripture says when you do that, you allow the enemy, a, the, the exact translation is a foothold. In other words, he can put his foot in the door of your home, come in and out at his leisure. Don't do it. Get someone in your life say, that's stupid. Stop it. No. You know better. Get your tail in in that house. Go make that right. Call her. Text her. Ask their forgiveness. Samson didn't have somebody. So he just picks up the whole city gates and chunks it out there and leaves the whole city in jeopardy. And your city's in jeopardy too when you don't have somebody in your life that's willing to tell you that's stupid. The last thing is this. Samson was blind. The reason he didn't have anybody in his inner circle is because he didn't have anybody that could tell him that he needed someone. And he was, listen, he lost his eyesight way before they gouged his eyes out. He didn't listen to his parents. He didn't listen to God. He didn't listen to leadership. He didn't listen to anyone. And the scripture says this, that Samson did not know. Judges 16, verse number 20, did not know that the spirit of the Lord had left him. And you need people in your life that can go, dude, where are you at? Why aren't you here? Why aren't you serving? Why aren't you reading? Why aren't you praying? Why aren't you stepping up? Why are you going there? Shut the gate. Shut the door. You need people in your life that say, don't say that. Don't post that on social media. That's stupid. Don't do that. Don't go there. Don't tweet that. You need people like that in your life. Why? Because you'll become blinded. And if you get the wrong people in your circle, you'll end up with their vision, not God-given vision. That will wreck you. And we become without vision. We become blind. He never had the right person in his circle. You know what's so crazy about the story of Samson? It says this. It says, he so had no friends that when his wedding day came, his future in-laws had to pay 30 guys to come be his friends at the wedding. You want to talk about extra wedding expense? It's like flowers, okay, yeah, uh, we've got the cake, uh, 30 friends I had to purchase because Samson doesn't have any friends because he's a loser. 
By the way, if you want dating 101 singles, you'll find out real quick who he is by who he hangs with and the way he treats his mom. Guaranteed every time. If he's got doofuses for friends, his name's Doofus. It's not magic, people. It's spirit-led, and ask God to give you the distinguished ability of distinguishing between the spirits. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I want to ask you a real question. Does your inner circle need to change? That's, all, that's the only question I'm asking. The Spirit of God is speaking to all of us in different ways. But does your inner circle need to change? If you know you need to get someone out or a right person in, would, d- d- honor this time for me, would you, church? Would you honor this time? This is so important. Can I just ask you this quick question? And be, be transparent. Do you need to get someone out of the circle or do you need to ask God to bring the right people in your circle? If that's you, would you just slip your hand up and put it right back down so I can pray for you? Just like previous services. It's the majority of us. Today's the day. I, I, had, I, I had people all the time it's like, oh man, would you be my accountability partner? I'm not talking about accountability partner. I'm talking about a friend that loves you enough to tell you, dude, you got pepper in your teeth. But not just when it comes to pepper, but when it comes to everything in your life, that honest and transparent, that type of inner circle. And Lord Jesus, I pray for the many that are, they got to make change. Everything flows through the power of right relationship. It begins in my relationship with you, Jesus, and spills into my relationships closest to me. Help us make wise decisions concerning our relationships. And give us the ability to make natural separation, supernatural separation as needed as we move forward. And then develop relationships with those that we know, the type of people we know we want to be around. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being online with us. I hope that this service was a blessing to you. If it was, I'd love for you to do two things. One, share this message with somebody. Let them be blessed by it as well. Two, go to brandnewchurch.com and go to the giving tab and sow into this online storehouse that is blessing you, your family, and your friends. Again, thank you so much for being online with us. We'll see you next week.